record on this computer. Okay, so what we're going to do today is kind of get into the process of developing your work that you can, you can turn into product um, to sell. So hopefully over the weekend we can really get sort of what Maxine is doing here. You've just been sort of ideating in your sketchbook a bunch of different things that maybe your friends have expressed interest in, and so you think might be interesting to make, maybe things that you bought from other artists and you thought, you know, I could do this too. I don't know, but, but hopefully you've started to see some ideas. And maybe you've also gotten to the point um, where you've sort of turned from your ideas to a little bit of like really simple market research, like if you can see that on the internet, where you're sort of uh, typing in keywords for what you really the product you want to make, and probably getting to artists' websites, places, marketplaces like Etsy, um, different maybe galleries and boutiques that sell that product, um, maybe uh, different sort of big print on demand sites, we'll talk about those a little bit to today, but just taking notes of like where you are selling things like what you want to make and also how much they're selling for. And you'll probably see things around the gamut, um, but looking at things like if the seller has a whole lot of like reviews, not only like she's a great product, but also just a single lot of people that can buy on that um, price point, those are going to be good things to sort of take um, that you think about much, um, into the market yourself. Um, I want to reiterate, and I'll just sort of take a step back. At the end of this unit, you do not have to like put any money forward to actually start this business or make your product. What I'm trying to get you to the point um, of doing in this unit is you have sort of an idea of how much it'll cost, how much it'll charge, uh, and how you give that, that begin to sort of give your business legs to sell. So maybe you could you feel like you're in a position to give it to the top of the unit and around the holiday season, so it could make a lot of sense. Um, it might just be something you can sort of shove for a while and you can sort of build. You never know how um, maybe you will be able to build a good product into your practice. So that if and when you decide you want to uh, start going to work um, and, and um, be an art entrepreneur, uh, you feel more relieved to do so than that. Right? So, kind of the destination for this unit, once again is you're gonna make sort of a prototype design of what you wanna sell. I'll be giving you Excel tools that'll help you uh, be able to create a very organized budget uh, and product cost log. And then you're going to make just a narrative marketing plan where you're going to define your product. You're gonna identify your target audience and explain a little bit how you came to those conclusions and then describe what you think your marketing approach would be. Does that make sense? Sweet. All right, so going back to today, Cecilia, this, if you wanna find a chair, this might take a minute or somewhere to, you can grab one from painting too if we're one and low. Do, 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 so here we are. So we'll, we'll chat through sort of how far you've gotten on these two steps when we're done. But I'm gonna give my little spiel. So once you've picked which, which idea uh, for a product you kind of wanna go with, what I want you to do uh, is just start making it. But the sort of new facet to your process, process is you start making this first product or designing the product. Um, we want you to just take super copious notes. I think it's going to be easier to just do this in a sketchbook rather than doing it in the spreadsheet right away. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, but what I want you to do is, is write a, a 
just write out a descriptive plan of what your product will be. Talk about material, talk about scale, talk about uh, um, subject matter, talk about how, you know, what you can sort of think of in terms of who and how, just to kind of keep your ideas organized as you start making something. So you don't just sort of get into it when you're process travel really far places I know because we are trying to work a little bit more efficiently when we're kind of thinking in terms of time spot size. Um, the next thing I want you to do is keep a detailed love chart and the time spent on the product. So every time you sit down to work towards getting this first product done, I want you to write write down in terms of day, time you started, time you finished. Does that make sense? And you can write that out however you want eventually within the, the spreadsheet. You're going to be looking to fractions of an hour. So if you're looking for an hour and a half, you would be put that 1.5. Does that make sense? But for right away, just kind of write it however it's going to be as well. You know, and you don't want to really have to answer that later. And then the last thing, I want you to keep a detailed log of the same specific materials that you use for the product. Um, you can just sort of be writing down brand names or anything you sort of see on the side of the product to start with, and then you might do a little internet research to just figure out how much it costs. Don't ignore anything that you use, even if I gave it to you. You're, you're going to act like you spent money uh, to buy it. You're not seeing money in one way or another. Does that make sense? Um, and the other thing when you make that material log, I do want you to think about this for the first thing that you're making, how much of the material is going to be used? Would you use like a quarter of a tube of paint, or you know, do you use two thirds of it, half of it? Just sort of write that down too. And I would recommend leaning on like the high side that you're using, just like that, as you figure out how much to charge, because you're not holding yourself. Ever in a position where you're writing your profits to pay for Does that make sense? Cool. Once you've sort of gotten that scrolly work done, and maybe maybe you're just working right into a spreadsheet will make sense while you're arting. It's never made much sense for me, but that could be different for you. But when you're ready, you can um, you can click on these spreadsheets that I've made and start inserting uh, that information into it. This one that I have in this PowerPoint is a bit too populated, but what I have it set up to do here, I'll make it a little bigger for you. Uh, let's go 85. Okay. So, as you can see, I have kind of everything I've said. So I have a little, my little product description up here. I'm gonna make an 11 by 15 frame pastel portraits that are commissioned. The client will provide the reference photo for these works. Um, this spreadsheet logs my labor, material, packaging, shipping, and calculates the break even total. So that would be sort of what you'd kind of have uh, on that first page of your notebook um, and what you'd sort of slide into this top um, bar of your um, spreadsheet. Then I have my activity log and then I just put a little bit of narrative. So it said, you know, my first day I, trim, I trimmed and measured it, measured and trimmed down paper of 11 to by 15 and I primed my surface. I did that on uh, the 20th of September and it took me an hour and a half. Does that make sense? And so um, I got myself all the way through packaging artwork. Let's say when you get your spreadsheet that I'm gonna give you, it's gonna have none of this in there. You can fill it all yourself. But let's say I added one more thing. Let's say I said, okay, emailed blah, the client. Um, to coordinate um, delivery. 
So let's say I did that on 10, 12. And let's say that that just took me 15 minutes. So that would be 0.25 of an hour. Anything I put into that last column is going to automatically add into my final column. Uh, the other place that it goes in this pre-created spreadsheet is it also will drop that number automatically down into the total hours. All right. Um, if I come over to the material side of this, I have kind of the same sort of situation. Uh, so let's say I'm kind of through flat weight box. Let's say I forgot I had all oh, one more tube of paint or one more uh, unison soft pastel. So let me add that. Uh, and I would do my research to figure out what this actually is. We'll say it is orange. It's nice to put your actual product numbers in there because then you'll be able to grab them out of here really quickly to order it. Uh, but let's say that is also $5.95. And for my uh, image, I actually use 20% of that. Oh, is that actually doing it? Well, it didn't add, I'll have to double check that, but it should add to my number here. Sorry. I will make sure that yours works like a charm. Best laid plans. There we go. Now it's given me its proper calculation. So 20% of 595 is 119. And that should add into my total there. All right, but then the next thing that uh, this spreadsheet will do for you once it is done is it allows you, so it's gonna tabulate the amount of hours that you worked. It'll also uh, drop your total unit cost, which is all of the total amount of material that you've used for your original work that you're making. Um, and then it also has a flexible box that lets you put in uh, what you want to be paid for an hourly wage. So what I've dropped in right now is $15 an hour, but I could also put in 20. And if I put in 20, you can see my wage earned uh, for 8.75 or 0.25 hours work has jumped up to $165. So I want my break even price for what I am charging for my original artwork has to at least pay me for my time, right? For my eight and a half hours work at $20 an hour. And it needs to pay for the cost of materials. So I really can't afford to sell this portrait that I've made for less than $222. Does that make sense? That's like super critical. That's something artists don't do enough for themselves. Do you want to keep in mind, you are well on your way to a professional degree in the fine arts. You deserve to be paid at least that $15 an hour, which is what the country is vying for, for a mi minimum wage. I'd argue with a professional degree, you should be paying yourself more than that. Does that make sense? 
So that definitely has to kind of factor into your sort of thinking as you do your market research about, about what am I making? How long does it take me to make it? And what are other people charging it for? Because if people, if you can't figure out a way to make one of these portraits in less than eight hours and 15 minutes, but the market is saying you can't charge $222, you've got to change your process so that you're making differently so you can actually afford to make and sell your work. Does that make sense? And this simple like early calculation will really help you have control over what and how you do that. Now, another way to make a profit, this is a huge problem for artists, but a workaround, and Robbie Davis talked about this a little bit, is prints. So let's look at this kind of same thing um, for prints. So on this spreadsheet, I've set up a lot of the same factors. I took out shipping because we'll talk about that in, in a little later in the presentation. There might be, it just felt like too many variables to talk about right now, so I just took it out. I'm just gonna, this spreadsheet takes us from making original work to getting print reproduction. From there, you might build another spreadsheet where you're like, I'm always going to be um, shipping these, or maybe I'm selling an art fair, or maybe I'm working at a gallery, or selling them through a gallery or shop. And those will be different variables that you have to consider in terms of that kind of cost or description. Does that make sense? So for right now, I'm just getting from the original print to production. So the first part looks a lot like what I had before. I've been walking my time. I did the same things. I had to make the original work and I'm factoring my time into that. Um, I, where I finished is I landed as a last one just that produced for this one. was photographing the artwork, visually edited it to be character printed, and then it took me another hour and a half. Does that make sense? Then what I went over is uh, on my material log, again, I had to make the original. So all of those same material. Uh, equations are kind of in the mix and you should be calculating your that chance as well. Um, and I'll, I'll end up probably with the originals that I might be able to sell. <laughs> I don't have to sell for, uh, for a higher price. But I've also put in, this is Iris Pro Print, that's a uh, company in common makes fine art prints. I went to their website, I typed in um, the characteristics of the print that I want. I was really doing this, I'd probably reach out to them for a quote too. Uh, but according to their website, for uh, an 11 by 14 print, it's going to be uh, 595 per print. Does that make sense? In the next column, the sense of materials needed, instead of just doing you know, half of a stick of uh, pastel, I put 10 prints of it. So I said I, what I wanted was the cost for 10 prints. Does that make sense? And so that calculated that the price for me to make 10 reproductions is 59.40. Uh, and that went into my total. From there, kind of same deal. Uh, I, I created a total price based on $15 an hour hours a day. Again, that's a a movable number that you can sort of be plugging different things into, and I think you should, as you're sort of solving this for yourself. Um, my total time was eight hours, 25 minutes. Uh, my total wage earned at $15 an hour is going to be $123.75. And my total price, which includes all 10 print reproductions on this time, is going to be uh, $77.26. So the very minimum that I could sell this time is two hundred and one dollars and one cent. But the difference is I now have ten prints in that number, and so that's kind of cool. So the next um, spreadsheet that I have for you is a profit margin calculator. I think. There we go. So the first one that I, and I pre-populated this one, I have one that is one now is in 
uh, that you'll be able to change with your own numbers. So in this, I put the price total. This was from the first, um, the first spreadsheet before I changed it. If I go back to fifteen dollars an hour, and if I take out this and then it'll go down, I believe, to the correct price. Well. I must have messed with it more anyway. But what I would do, I'll go ahead and do it now. So if I take this number 177.78 from this and I pop it in to this column, um, then, then this gives me my absolute minimum sort of break even price. What's flexible also in this spreadsheet is you're able to change this number here, which is sale price. So let's say I've decided I want to sell this work for $200, the original artwork. Then the lower other part of the, or half of the spreadsheet calculates two things for us. It calculates our profit margin so the profit margin represents what percentage of, of sales is turned into profits. So uh, how much money beyond your break even price you're making. So we're making 12% profit if we sell at $200. And that means that the profit money you're coming out uh, with after that sale is 22 bucks, all right? 22 bucks you didn't have before. That's something, but a 12% profit margin is pretty low. And if you're working with a gallery that was going to take a commission, there's commissions usually like 30 to 40 or even 40 to 50. So you really have to sort of aim higher than that. Um, again, that can sometimes be challenging as a beginning art, like an emerging artist uh, trying to sell original work. But let's see what happens if we put in 250. So if 250, that brings me up to a 41% profit margin, and that's making uh, $72. A lot better. Doesn't actually feel like a whole lot more money to But that kind of calculation is really important to remember too. Uh, $250 now yeah, there's a solution to one problem. So thinking about that as well. And it's just you up uh, to make a lot more profit than you be able um, to invest more in your business, maybe buy a piece of equipment that lets you be more fast. Maybe you know you put some of that profit aside and after five sales you're able to buy a tool, a tool projector digital projector so that it cuts the drawing time of your place down like a lot. Um, and so then you'll be able to make Does that make sense? And so factoring profit in is really, really important. You could also, if you're thinking big, it could be uh, that, that that profit that you accrue is enough that you could sort of pay for help, somebody else to market, somebody else to help with certain different parts of the making process uh, somebody to stuff envelopes and do the wrapping for you, that kind of thing, which could be really exciting and really helpful to, for your business. Let's go back to the print conversation. So if we look at this next uh, spreadsheet talks about um, break even price for print. So our price total, this is from the other uh, spreadsheet, here it is. I try to use the same language. So you look down and you look for price total. So you're gonna put that number in yourself. Um, I could have connected them, but I want you to have a little bit more flexibility at each stage. Um, so you'll just type that in from your, your previous cost log. You'll also be able to type in how many 
prints you produced. I decided last time that I'm producing 10, you could be deciding a different number and you put that in. Um, and then the calculation that this does by itself uh, is it, it does the division that you need to then determine if we divide $201 by 10, we have to charge uh, $20 and 10 cents per print to break even. That's not bad. The other cool thing is it doesn't even think about um, what we could make from selling them. Uh, the competitive realm. After we do that, we can go down profit margin calculator for first 10 prints. So unit price, that's our break even total. We can put that down 20, 10. But then you can play with the sales price and say, okay, let's say I charge $30 per print. If I charge $30 for my first 10 prints, then I am making um, 49, a profit margin of 49%, and I'm making nine, almost 10 bucks on extra on every print itself. And that's really cool. Here's where it gets even cooler. If you, after, after you pay for your first 10 prints, you've actually paid for all that cost of making it, all your labor. So let's say you pay, you decide to do another run of 10 prints. Then each print is only costing 554 because you don't have to charge yourself for labor again. Does that make sense? So then when you charge $30 for print for a print, your profit margin is actually, you're actually making four times the cost of the print that you're selling every time. And making twenty four dollars thirty six cents every five dollars from the market. So that's that's why artists really get into this sort of reproduction business. That's why when you go to art fairs, you can see garage um, painters, furnitures, sculptors. Well, sculptors have a harder time doing this, but people you, you see people with sort of production type of work because it allows um, that profits go way, way, way up, uh, and then costs are going to be Does that make sense? Yeah. Is the profit per print or percent? Per print. Yeah. 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 So, and then when I just put a, just a single unit, so you're just looking at, uh, you know, the, the single price per unit. I could probably build another one that lets you put. More, but yeah, this would be the I'm charging thirty dollars per print. The cost of the print is only ten is five fifty four. And actually, with a lot of printers, if you do big runs, you can probably even get that price down further. Um, and then that gives you a profit. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? When you get to this point too, it also gets to be the point where you can be kind of crafty about sort of sales too. Just because you're making that much profit, that's when you're in the position to actually be able to get, you know, sell things at half price and still come out way ahead of cost, uh, which is what you want to do. Uh, and so that's another thing to sort of be sort of watching your business, watching companies that are and looking at sort of where you are in terms of what that that initial break even total to then have more sort of flexibility in your, in your marketing and building your business. Does that make sense? Cool. And that's really, like, if you do go to art trees, a lot of times artists are able to do sort of half price last day sort of sales, because that hopefully is an indicative that they've had a good um, weekend <laughs> leading up to that. Uh, and are able to be selling at lower prices um, and, and still coming out ahead of their bottom line. Make sense? I'm sure that some just kind of get put in a position to do that because their neighbor is, but 
that is sort of the hope. Um, so let me show you where uh, Canvas, what did I do? Oh, it's this, oh, sorry. Uh-oh, I may have killed Zoom too. No, oh, there it is, okay. So let me just, I'm gonna back out of my little presentation and I'm just gonna show you where you find your own spreadsheet. So what you'll be able to do when you're ready, after you've sort of logged your stuff, when you're start, ready to start building your spreadsheet, you can just click uh, on that link. It's both in the first art and business unit page and also on today's module and hopefully, come on. And so here is the one that you will see. It is all ready to go. So you can start, let's say I just put in 1.5 hours for prepping. And you can see that that is going to drop right in. Let's say I did two hours for sketching. And you can see that that's already growing. Same thing, uh, it will automatically populate. I have locked, hopefully, uh, any of the cells that you shouldn't be able to populate, so you shouldn't scramble the equation. But if you have any issues, let me know. Like I said, in start, instead of starting my own entrepreneurial art business out of grad school, I took a really boring data entry job and I learned how to build Excel spreadsheets. And I hated it, <laughs> but I can do it. So, um, so I can help you get out of any uh, kludginess with these spreadsheets. I'm also tomorrow going to make probably my most exciting videos yet, where I'll show you how to build these and how to uh, uh, use basic equations to make your own that are even more uh, tailored to you if and when you want to. But honestly, if you save this file, if it works for you, um, now you'll be able to continue to just uh, save as a new ones and, and use it for as many years as you want to. That's sort of the nice things about how these work. So, so I have your cost log all empty. Profit calculator, just because of um, percentage equations are a little weird when you're dealing with too many zeros. So I just put $1 in here too, but you can populate them with whatever you want based on what you calculated on your previous totals. And it will do its calculations properly for you as well. If you have trouble remembering what to put where, I've included the examples that I just showed you in the PowerPoint that'll hopefully help you connect the dots from one spreadsheet to the other. Does that make sense? And so that'll be downloadable for you and I will help you with that on every part of the way. Maybe you'll end up loving spreadsheets. That would certainly be something. All right, so. The next thing that I did wanna to talk to you about is just a little bit about some context for making reproductions of your work. Um, I would say if there is a local proprietor to um, make your fine art prints or your product of any kind, I recommend seeking them out and, and working with them for a couple of reasons. One, it's always just safer to work with people. It's nice to be able to walk into a place, I feel like weird for that right now, uh, share your work in person. Um, and But more importantly, to be able to Quality and 
Being an artist is all about making things. So artists and printers um, do have a tendency to build like close connections and also to be really good sort of business allies for one another. And so you can see the people in your relationship really will go to hire your company um, to also take away from your work and then you know um, value check and you're be like, yeah, well, you can my country and they're amazing. I highly you know, highly recommend them and vice versa. Um, you know, they make really great photos, blah blah blah, really, really cool designs, they have it on the wall. If you can just that sort of relationship in a certain way, so you want to go together. Um, that way. So um, you can do your own research that way. Sometimes working local, especially when you're just starting out, can be cost prohibitive. It will be if you actually decide to, uh, you know, go forward with this business. Something you'll have to consider. Like, can I afford it? <laughs> if it's if it's more expensive, um, but it's worth looking. So here, I just say a couple um, that I've heard of uh, and known people to use. This iris imaging is nice. They uh, do a lot of photo brace works, but you can see that they um, have a care for, for materials. They do mounting. They have uh, archival mat uh, paper, which is I think most ideal for, um, for printing. You could also look at our pricing in the gear lab too. Don't make Meredith too mad if you start doing this. Because she is just one human who does the printing, but we have very nice printing uh, resources here on campus that are pretty reasonably priced as well. Um, Insta prints. Now they usually focus on uh, commercial printing, but they have a really long and lovely connection to IUR Fine Arts, um, and I've just known them to really care about our series of ten their processes. So I can just recommend them to students if they can't do what what you want to do they they won't fool you they'll just tell you <laughs> they'll be, you know they'll probably direct you elsewhere um but for a lot of printing uh so they say really nice high quality inserts uh and i think they can certainly handle some very uh you know uh, medium scale sort of fine art printing so they would be they would be happy They'd be someone to talk to. I, they'll give you an honest feedback in my experience. Um, this last company I haven't worked with directly. They seem to have a nice website and good reviews though. They had even more sort of options for what they could print. So I put them in as well. Um, they have a nice uh, website that lets you kind of, uh, they, it sort of populates a quote for you. So it could be nice for just this, um, this project where, where we're kind of working in hypotheticals and they might give you what you need to sort of solve that. So those are the first few for screen. Now you could be looking at other sort of textiles and other objects, things like screen printing. Um, Dirty Tees seemed like the most kind of flexible one in, and creative. They will print on your own shirts. They seemed uh, very interested in working specifically with artists on their designs. Uh, there are lots of other um, custom printing service companies that I found in Louisville. They just seem a little bit more targeted at uh, corporate design and embroidery. I know if you're not judging a book by the cover, especially if you have a connection to another business. It's always worth, worth checking and telling, you know, if they're interested in it, they'll but but based on sort of my research it seemed like this company uh was pretty interested in working with artists so that was something i could recommend um in terms of custom printing though a lot of times you, a better um, low cost option may be larger, big national and international kind of powerhouses of custom printing and fabrication. Um, 
And so here are some suggestions for that. So Zazzle is, is both a print on demand service, which you can talk about in a minute, but you can also uh, order small runs of custom uh, products from them. Um, let's see, if you go right to create, it brings you to a really nice sort of interactive tool where you can upload your image and without any kind of login or any kind of, let's see. I know I put an image in here ready to go. Where did it go? Well, Emily, can we use one of yours here? Yeah? Can we use this? <laughs> we'll just play with, since I seem to have that up. I thought I had a picture of Ding Dong, but now I can't find it. But you can right away play with what your uh, image would look like. And there's some nice kind of flexibility within that shape. They also have links to templates, but if you wanted to make your beautiful drawing into a mask, a greeting card, notebook. I get, we can get really weird too. I like, what was I finding last night? The floor mats was one of my favorites. Like, oh, it doesn't think it'll work for floor mats. All right. A fan. <laughs> anyway, you sort of get the, get the hint. And up here under my Zoom face, it tells you how much it would cost to produce too. So that's easy for sort of research. Um, and gives you a sense of what what that cost would be. Um, and they will produce as many as you want and ship them to you. So you will be, you know, you don't have to press the buy, but you, you can go through as far as to select the amount that you would want to order and put it into your price log and get, use that to get a very good sense of, of how much it would cost. Um, Custom ink, very similar. Um, they kind of probably a little bit more focused on sort of apparel, uh, but they're known for being uh, nice and legit in terms of just uh, charging you cost, which is helpful. So you, they're nice for price checking. Spoonfall is, a, is kind of a neat company. They're very much interested in um, creating different textiles using your designs. Uh, they have some programs within their platform that'll help sort of take a single image and help you sort of organize it into a textile pattern. Um, and then they can produce it as all sorts of different things um, that you can purchase from them or they have a, um, direct to print service where you could sell your works on spoon flower um, which we'll talk about in just a minute but that's another place to look for one thing that i did notice that's really cool is we just missed the deadline but every october they have a um a grant for students that you can apply to get a thousand dollars of spoon flower design um, designing for for your work. So if you wanted to make like a installation for your thesis doll where you design wallpaper and floor covering and fabric, they have kind of a scholarship program to be able to do that. So that's something to keep in mind in the future too. Not necessarily for this purpose, but for other purposes, it's worth checking out. Um, in my research, this was one of the nicest little articles I found. There are lots of artists who are gener like artist entrepreneurs generously sharing uh, what they've done, what works, what do doesn't work. Uh, this one was really nice. This is an artist who has been making a lot of enamel pins and patches, both very trendy art items right now. 
And she just kind of gives it to you straight about sort of what, and I guess she does, and then she does pins, patches, and stickers. Talks about sort of uh, do's and don'ts in designing. Um, and then talks about her favorite companies to work with, which I think is really nice. I was gonna paraphrase, but then I thought, oh, you can just read this yourself. Um, but within this uh, article, she does link to companies that she's recommending. So that can be a nice thing to look at. Um, and those are definitely products that are very kind of on trend right now. Um, but this is a good article, read it. She, she gives you sort of at least her perspective on the long and short of, of what's good about different modes of uh, reproducing and selling uh, and what sort of leaves you short. Um, coming up next, we talk about uh, print on demand options. So print on demand is really kind of cool. It's relatively new. Um, the way it works, this is companies like Bread Bubble, Society6, Zazzle also does it. Uh, um, Spoonflower does have a, a print on demand, a kind of marketplace that's a part of their business in IT. Um, but the way it works is it starts with a lot of this sort of production process and design process out of the uh, artist's hands. And you, what you do is you upload a design. Um, you can even sort of uh, if you want, select some uh, product options that you want to be sort of attached to, or you can be very wide open. And then your design is put up into this big wide marketplace where people from anywhere in the world can select your art, put it on an object uh, that's available on Society6, and then they print it, uh, ship it, and what you do, you get is a cut of those products. Um, depending on the uh, print on demand company, the cut you get is bigger or smaller. There are some that require subscription. Uh, a lot of them don't at this point. Uh, they're, they're interesting. You know, I think um, th this article here, uh, it kind of like the last one is is an artist entrepreneur who is kind of focused a lot on t-shirts, I believe. Um, and he's sort of sharing his experience working with uh, many different present demand companies, sort of giving his insight. Um, the challenge with it is it makes it easy. You make some money. The question is, could you make more if you did yourself? Did it yourself? That's one thing you can kind of play. Uh, in, in sort of, you can sort of put in different lines of different spreadsheets and see how you come out. Um, the challenge though is you are usually in a mode. And so it's like, how do you get people to find your work and buy it enough to, to make actual money um, in this context? And that takes, and that means it takes a lot, a lot of marketing, which, which can work too. Um, but it's kind of, it's interesting to think about. Um, what's neat about it is they really, they know their business. They have a lot of different things that they're going uh, to attach your product to. They also allow you to build just your own little stores within their platform that then you can uh, advertise. Um, it, 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 it generally, seems like a pretty legit legitimate and helpful kind of resource for artists. Like I not, it feels like it should get scammy. It doesn't actually seem, these don't seem that scammy. The big question is though, you know, is it going to be the most profitable for you? Is it going to be something that you set up and, you know, you set up and forget it, chances are you won't make very much from it. Um, but I think they'll be interesting to look at does that make sense? All right, so that's, so read, you can read through this article. I think he, he gives a, a nice overview. It's just one opinion, but it, it's well-reasoned and well-researched. Um, and then you could play with, uh, with uploading your design to these different um, 
the websites and see sort of what you could turn your designs or drawings into that way. Um, the last sort of thing I wanted to just cover a little bit is um, some opportunities um, that you maybe wouldn't follow through to this point uh, in your business plan, but it's probably worth looking into. A lot of uh, artists give their first sort of products legs through a GoFundMe or Kickstarter account. They aren't just for charities. Um, it's a very, I mean, Kickstarter absolutely started as uh, a mechanism to get startup businesses off the ground. And so uh, in particular, Kickstarter has really good resources and tutorials about how to start a, a Kickstarter. Um, what, what you might be thinking about um, raising money for initially is just giving that money to um, use your gallery home artwork and Yeah, I've included, I've included those uh, options at the end of this presentation just to be another thing to sort of be looking into and exploring. Cool. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Let me, I'll remind us what we're going to do now. So today, what you'll do is um, have your sort of sketches of different uh, product ideas ready just to chat with, with me. Um, you can also be working a little bit on this sort of research, looking at sort of what other people are charging, uh, where they're selling their, their product as well. Like uh, if you feel like you have a clear idea of the direction you want to go in, go ahead and start making your first one or the design for it. As you do so, remember you are have to, have to build that discipline and to keep track of what you do so that you aren't supporting yourself on this one. And so have your uh, sketchbook ready to just be taking notes on what you're doing. After you have that, and at any point you want, you might be able to do this at the end of day at each day, or maybe you wait till the very end uh, when you have your finished project and then translate it into the spreadsheet, but you can download that file there. And that's what brings you to this spreadsheet here that you can fill out yourself. Make sense? All right. I think that's all I got. I'm gonna stop the Zoom and we'll go ahead.